And so I want to go back to gratitude for a minute, but I want to do a piece on worship. Amen. I want to talk about this, this idea, this, um, this idea of gratefulness coming out, uh, out of gratefulness comes worship. Amen. Out of gratefulness comes your praise. Uh, I know you came here today, but did you come here with an expectancy in your heart? Amen. And then the question is, what is worship, right? Uh, we talked about this last week. We talked about, uh, what we talked about, the posture. Let me see here. Let me, let me see. The posture. What else? The position. The p- p- purpose. Amen. But, but did we talk about the power? <laughs> Amen. We didn't talk about the power, right? Is that what I talked about last week? Amen. So, so, but, but I want to talk, I talked about, actually, I talked about the practice, the attitude, the action, the atmosphere, the aroma. Amen. The aroma. And then I changed it to peas now. Amen. So we talked about the what? The, the, no, no, last week, the what? The action, the attitude, the atmosphere, and the aroma. Do you know that when you walked into this church this morning, amen, you walked and you have stepped on holy grounds? How many believe that? Amen. You are standing on holy ground. So therefore, your attitude, hallelujah. Your attitude, some people think, oh, it's traditional. You know, certain things are done in church traditionally. But that's not tradition. What it is, it's the fact that we know the atmosphere that we're in, that we're in. Amen. And we know that we're in the presence of who? Of God. So whatever is going on in your heart this morning. Whatever is going on in your mind this morning, amen. It is real important that you don't allow the enemy to rob you of the attitude, hello somebody, of worship. Amen. Now, I told you, uh, last week we looked at the, at, at the man of the, of the ten leper that Jesus had healed, right? And one came back, only one out of ten comes back. Oh Lord, that statistic is so low. Amen. Do you know only one out of 10 persons will show gratitude for the things that God has done for them? Hallelujah. Because from the moment that things start working out, come on somebody. Now watch this. The other nine, they left, but watch it, but they didn't stay for the rest of the story. And so we, we find ourselves today Talking about, amen, worship from a heart of gratitude, amen. So let's pray and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get into it, uh, today. Um, I want to talk, I want you to know that there are different aspects of worship. There is what's called the art of worship, amen, the art of worship, all right? Worship as entertainment can sometimes overpower worship as service rendered unto God. Does that make sense? Worship as entertainment can sometimes come across as authentic worship to God. And we got to be careful that we're not caught up in entertainment And we are substituting our, what we call worship for our service to God. Now, when I say worship, what am I saying? When you think about worship, what do you think? What do you think about? Praising him. Sacrifice. Okay, what else? Uh, When we come together corporately, right? What are we doing? We're... We're singing, we're, we're praising, we're thanking, right? And, and, and what I want to tell you as a believer that you and I should always be grateful, but out of that grateful, gratefulness should come some praise. Come on, somebody. 
out of that gratefulness, when you think about where you are now, when, but just not that, but when you think about whose presence you're in, what I want us to do as a church is to move past just thanking God or appreciating God for just what he's done, but not for what he's done, but for who he is. And I believe that that's what worship, that's true worship. True worship constitutes from a heart or comes from a heart that says, God, because of who you are, come on somebody, because of your greatness, because of your mercy, go to Psalm 24 for me. Amen. I'll say this to you. Uh, if there is any overriding biblical truth that must be practiced in every worship service, it is this. Note this. That worship, you ready for this? Is all about God and not about us. Isn't that something? Now we're talking that Christians ought to always be grateful. And out of my gratefulness, I must remind myself that when I come to church and I'm worshiping God, not, not just church, but listen, worship should be a lifestyle, as we said yesterday. Worship should uh, pull out the parking lot with you. Amen. He said, well, I don't have nothing to worship about. Man, listen, can I, can I give, give you one? You woke up this morning. Am I by myself? Listen, worship is what? It's all about who? And it's not about who? So if worship is not about us, then here's the thing. Then I really, it, it really doesn't matter what type of music. <laughs> Amen. It, it really shouldn't matter what type of music is being played. Amen. If the worship, if worship is all about God, uh, some of you didn't feel that. Amen. Here's the thing. Whether I'm listening to contemporary, whether I'm listening to classical, whether I'm listening to old school, whether I'm listening to new school, the bottom line is that's what music does for worship. It just enhances how I feel about God. About who? God, and I believe that for some of us, the Lord put this on my spirit this morning. Our church has to shift. Amen. In this respect, that we have to focus more on God in the worship setting. Amen. And not just about what I'm going through at this moment. Amen. A lot of people come to church because they want a word from God to help them through the week. But my question is, when are you going to just come and say, God, I just came here for you today. I just came here, what? For you. I came here to glorify you. I came here to give you thanks. I came here to adore you. I came, I'm talking about now the aroma. The aroma is what comes out of you and what you render unto God. I'll show you something in a minute. Amen. Watch this. Worship is all about God and not about who? Us. Amen. The preacher issues an imperative for worship. Amen. And, and that means that he says, come on, y'all, let's worship God. Okay. But, but watch this. It's not only about being asked to worship. It's you rendering worship from a heart that says God because of you. Not because of what you have done. But because of you. Can you imagine this? You're in a relationship. And the only time you're happy is when someone does something for you. And that's the only time you have joy in the relationship. But from the moment that person stops being kind to you, or just, not just even being kind, just stop doing stuff for you, all of a sudden you start believing that the relationship is over. Are you with me? And so what I'm saying is, my question to you is this. 
Are you really worshiping? Amen. I'm just saying. Are you really worshiping God or are you just emotional? Or it's just your emotions. Now, not everybody understands the dynamics of worship. And that's why the Lord put it on my heart. I need you to teach my people about what worship really is. You know, you shouldn't really have to sacrifice to worship. If you, if it's all about God, come on somebody, then nothing should what? Stop you. No one should what? Stop you. Read for me Psalm 24 real quick. Somebody. <laughs> yes. The earth is the Lord's. The who? The earth is the Lord's. And all it contains. Isn't that amazing how you have the earth and then you have the world? <laughs> you know what he's talking about when he said world, right? Galaxies and yeah, different, you know, this, this earth is one part of the what? World. Come on, somebody. So therefore, if God owns everything, amen. No, not if, because God owns everything. He expects us to worship him. Watch this. Keep reading. For he has founded it upon the sea mm -hmm. and established it upon the rivers. All right. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? All right. And who may stand in his All right. Now, now watch this. Ah. Now watch this. Who should ascend to the hills of the Lord? And who should come into his what? See, here's what I want to show you. Sometimes people get it all messed up. They come into the holy place, not knowing it's a holy place. And what they render unto God, amen, right? It's not pleasing to God. The aroma is not there. Amen. Because, because for some reason now today in to contemporary church today, they, oh yeah, you can bring your Starbucks in. You could, you know, you can, you know, you just come into church. Oh, you don't need to dress. You know, you just come with some flip flops on and you just, you know, it's, it's all good. You know, come as you are. I get it. Come as you are. But if you walk up in here in your night clothes, huh, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on. Who should, who should what? Stand. Look what he says. Who may stand? Who may stand in his holy... Listen, we're in his holy place. Listen, he's not talking about your appearance. He's talking about your attitude. <laughs> now, the appearance piece comes after you recognize... Amen. That you are in the what? Presence of God. I want you to think about that every time you open those doors, every time you walk into the sanctuary, every time you walk down the hallway. I want you to think about, man, we're standing on holy ground. Why are we standing on holy ground? Because this is the place that we have designated, amen, to call upon the name of of Jesus. Listen to this. Read real quick. Watch what he says. He who has what? Clean hands. And a what kind of heart? Pure heart. A pure heart. Uh huh. And have not sworn to see. In other words, his character. His attitude. See, when you come to church, I want you to think, man, we're coming. I'm, I'm great. First of all, let's back it up for a minute. I'm grateful. And because I'm grateful, I'm respectful. Hey, 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 hey. Not only am I respectful, but my attitude is one 
that when I come into the presence of God, I come here because I think when I think about him, think about him. Now he says he who has clean hands, pure heart, right? Who has not uh, spoke false or lying and all attitude, right? But watch this. Watch the next verse. Watch the next verse. Next verse is powerful. He says, he said, see, here's the thing, right? I don't know why you came this morning. But I didn't come to sleep. I didn't come, you know, for no other reason. I need a blessing. How many need a blessing this morning? How many? No, seriously, come on now. Act like y'all really need a blessing now. Who may stand in his what? Presence. He says, he shall receive a what? Blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. See, what happens? The God, God is in heaven. We're on earth. But amazingly, while we're on earth, the Lord invites us into his presence. But being in the presence of God is a privilege. And it ought to be an overwhelming uh, feeling upon your heart that says, God, here I am to worship you. And it was, and my worship was born out of, ready for this? Gratitude. You need to go back and listen to this on the podcast. It's born out of what? Gratitude. Go to Ecclesiastes for me. I think I may come back to that psalm, but I want to, I don't want to get hung up there. You, you do know where Ecclesiastes is, right? Yeah, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Okay? And I want you to read for me verse 1. Now, let me say this. Being in the presence of God is a privilege. Amen. All right. The atmosphere, but the danger. Some people don't see. But without the right attitude. I know you got a lot going on. But when you come into God's presence, y'all. We should try to check this. Check our hearts. Lord, my, if my hands clean today, uh, I know I done stepped in the mud. All week long, I done stepped in the mud. But, but I'm here now. And I'm here to worship you. I'm here to give you adoration. I'm here to give you thanksgiving. I'm here, God, to worship and praise your holy name. Why? Because it was born out of what? Gratitude. God, I'm grateful. Amen. Look at how many people went through this flooding thing this week. But look at us. We're good. Our house is good, intact. But my question is, how grateful are you? But when I come into his presence... I show my gratitude. The choir, the praise team shouldn't have to say, well, come on, y'all, let's praise God. Well, come on, y'all, let's, let's worship and let's, let's give God thanks today because he's been good. Now, we already know that. Tell us something we don't know. Share something with me that's new. <laughs> because I already know that piece. And out of knowing that piece, I should show it in my outward expression. You know when the best time to praise God? When you're going through. But you know one of the hardest things to do? When, you know one of the hardest places to praise God? When you come through. Oh yeah, it's just, uh, whatever, I'll just do it when. Oh yeah, whatever, I'll go back to my old bad habits. Can I talk to somebody real quick? Go right back to my old habits, yeah, yeah, I just... Because everybody is, 
Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, watch this. Guard your what? When you do what? When you go where? <laughs> what did he say? Draw near to what? <laughs> Rather than to offer what? For they do not know that they're doing what? Do not be hasty. Man, listen, in church, some people, they just don't get it. They talk crazy to people. Uh, you know, they get this little attitude on their shoulder. Seriously, this, 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 God says, first of all, you're standing on holy ground. And your worship does not begin when you get here. Your worship begins at home when you're getting dressed. And then when you get in your car and then, yeah, yeah, I know a lot of stuff has happened. But when you pull up in the, into God's house, he says, God, don't be hasty in words or impulsive in what? In what? Now, listen, what we don't know is going on in your mind. Oh, shoot. You got a lot on your mind. He said, don't be hasty in your thoughts. I'm sorry, impulsive in your thoughts. To bring up a matter into what? In the presence of God. For God is in heaven and you are where? On the earth. Huh? On the earth. Yeah, you are on the what? Earth. Tell your neighbor the danger of worship. The danger of worship. <laughs> That's what that is. Look what he says. He says... For God is in heaven and you're on earth. Therefore, let your words be what? Few. For, for the dream, for dream, for the dream comes through much effort. And the voice of a fool through many what? Words. When you make a vow to God, do not be late in paying it. For he takes no delight in fools pay Now, a lot of people are under that particular problem right now because they're very impulsive. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. Man. I'm going to do Oh, I'm going to give God praise. <laughs> the reason you can't praise is because you, you, you're very impulsive. You talk too much. Let your actions speak loud in your word. In other words, don't tell me you're worshiping God. Don't tell me you love God. Show me. As a matter of fact, don't show me, show God. When you come into his house, your main focus should be him. I came here this morning with a whole lot of things coming at me, thousand miles an hour. But I had to refocus myself. Regroup myself on God. Because I realized that I came here to worship him. I want to have a worship that's so authentic, that's so real, right? You, you know, you know, people that want to stay away from God's house, they have a worship issue. But they also have a relationship issue. Uh, uh, I don't need to go. I don't need to go. I don't need to go. I, no, I don't need to go. But, but listen, but watch this. But you were going. When things were going your way, you were going. When everything was working out, you were going. But now you're in the, in the mess. For some reason, it ain't as important to you anymore. But listen, I'm going to worship him as, as long as I live, y'all. Until the day I die. When it gets rough, I'm going to praise him. When it gets tough, I'm going to praise him. When, when things don't seem like it's getting better, I'm going to keep worshiping and praising him because I realize that I'm in his house. And what better place to bring my problems? What, but what better place to let out what I really feel? At some point, we should be all on the same page. Amen. Praising our God 
because of who he is. Look what he says. He says, when you make a vow, pay it, right? Verse 5. It is better that you should not, what? Vow, than you should, what? Vow and not pay. Do not let your speech cause you to sin. And do not say in the presence of who? Who's the messenger? No. Amen. Uh, I was just playing. <laughs> I, I was just playing, Pastor. Uh, I made a mistake. Why should God be angry on account of your voice and destroy? Oh, what should tell your neighbor the danger of worship? When you walk through these doors, Listen, how we act in God's presence is important. Write that down. Amen. Watch this. This this word where he says, keep your foot, simply means to guard your steps, to be careful about your conduct. Watch this though. But to exercise... Write this down. To exercise restraint. <laughs> the, what, what, yeah, to exercise, no, just put that down, exercise restraint. In other words, <laughs> you may have a lot going on, but you got to learn how to ex, how to restrain yourself. How to, how to be disciplined to the point where you're like, you know what? I'm not going to bring that matter up in God's house today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come and I'm going to worship him. Lord, I'm going to worship my way through this thing. Listen, I know you probably, probably thinking I was going to tell you all kinds of cute little points to get out of there. Man, listen, I want to hit you for real. What I'm saying is I want to hit you with the real so that way you understand worship. See, because worship is a serious thing. And, and if we're going to worship God, we got to first recognize where we are. Now, I already know you know this, and I know I don't want to be redundant, okay? But sometimes, right, here go my, here go my next R. I don't want to be redundant, but every now and then we need a what? Reminder. What do we need a reminder of? Man, I'm in God's house. I done said some, I mean, oh my, I'm impulsive and thought past a trip in the day. You know what I mean? All of that. Go to Exodus 3 for me. Go to Exodus 3. And, and let me show you, let me show you something. You know, if, if God wasn't concerned, can I say something? If God wasn't concerned about how we come before him, then, then, then guess what? He would have told us so. But oftentimes, we fall into routine. See, we fall into, um, I'm here this morning. I'm, 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 I'm in, I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm just here. Pastor, you don't know what I had to go through to get here. <laughs> I get it. I understand it because I had to go through some stuff too. But you'll never, have you, well, maybe. But have you ever seen me sweat? When I get here, okay, I make sure I put all that out there. You know why? Because he wants me to not be my best in here. He wants me to break down and say, oh, man, duh, duh, you know. That happened a long time ago on Riceville. Seriously, man, I got, I got so, man, I got so overwhelmed in church. I just walked out. I did. I was, I was frustrated, man. Life had, life had hit me hard. Ministry, not life, ministry. And I learned from that moment. I said, Lord, I'll never do that again. If you want to be in the fire, you got to get ready for it. And when you, when you decide, Amen. That you're going to do something right. You better believe. Say, listen, if we were doing this thing wrong, if I was just hyping you up and telling you how to worship, worship like this. And then next week <laughs> you come back 
and you fall right back into your own routine. I want you to understand the seriousness of this thing. The seriousness of worship is this, that first of all, we understand there's a danger in worship and the danger is this, that when you come into the presence of God, you got to recognize whose presence you're in and act accordingly. You hear what I'm saying? Speak to one another with love. Okay? Uh, overlook some offenses. Don't take it personal. Don't wear your feelings on your shoulder because you are in the presence of who? God. Now, that does not excuse bad behavior. Because here's the thing. If I'm treating you right and you're treating me wrong, I'm going to say, listen, I'm trying my best now. Hold on now. Then you ought to do what I'm doing. And don't wait till you get to the parking lot. I've seen churches where people wait till they get to the parking lot to fight. Seriously? Wait till after church. No, 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 no. We ain't doing none of that. Look, look at Genesis, Exodus 3 real quick. Moses uh, had been on the backside. He'd been in college for about 40 years. God put him in the University of Wilderness for 40 years. He enrolled him. He was an alumni five times. Amen. <laughs> All right. And, 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 and here's the problem with Moses. Moses' issue was he had an anger problem. All right. Now, if you don't deal with your then you got a problem. Amen? So somebody read for me verse 1. See, what God was doing, God was, for those 40 years, he was teaching them how to pastor people and stubborn colored people, um, stubborn people. That, you know, middle-aged Older people. He was teaching them for 40 years how to pastor. And the best way to learn how to pastor is to pasture sheep. Because the people were just like. They were stubborn. They would stray off. So he had to get the. Pull them back in. All right. He had to train them to hear his voice only and not Joel Osteen and Steve Furtick and all them other guys. Come on, help me somebody. But hear your pastor's voice. Because when you hear your pastor's voice, you will follow him and wherever he goes. So God was teaching them all that. Keep reading. Midian. Midian. Mm -hmm. West side. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Keep reading. Now, now watch this. My question to you today is, how are you expecting God to appear to you today? He appeared to him in a burning bush. Go on. Yet. Lord have mercy. When you see the bush on fire and, it, and it's not being consumed... You know, that the burning bush is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. But read on real quick. So God called him. He listen, God drew him. Right? God called him twice. But watch the next piece. God invited him in his presence. But watch what he told him. Then he said, Do not come here. Do not come near here. Remove yourself. 
remove because see wherever them shoes was taking him <laughs> where, where have your tires taken you where have you been see when you leave here you go out into the world where you been see but when you come in here he says it's not that I don't want you in here but he says remove your sandals for what you are standing on what you are st- for for the gr- for the place on which you're standing tell your neighbor this is holy ground and so if i were to back it up with all the scriptures that i gave you from guarding your steps when you come into the house of god guarding your mouth don't be impulsive don't your attitude the aroma starts with your attitude and the danger of worship is not recognizing who's here and that it's holy